Everybody in Hokies are all uh, ready for a riveting 45 minutes of fire safety. Um, so, first of all, who is Lenny Rock and Fact Fire? I'm sure a good few of you is out there were saying, um, who have they got in this evening to talk to us? I've never heard of him. So, I'll just give you a quick background on myself. So, I'm working in the fire safety industry since 1997. I started out straight out of college. I had um, was looking for a job. To be honest, I hadn't got a huge knowledge of the fire safety industry and just fell onto it by accident. I uh, started out life as a with, with a company called Fire Safety Consultants, FCC. Um, I was lucky enough to come across Donald O'Keefe at the time, and Donald gave me a start. Again, being the fellow that Donald is, he allowed me to to learn the prod, to learn the job as I went along, and I was I'd be always grateful to Donald for for allowing me to do it to, to be the person that he was. In 2003, um, I set up fire application consultancy team. In uh, fact, uh, started out in my bedroom, like a lot of people do when they're starting out. Uh, one computer took a few, lend off my mother, I think, and, and start and got going. Um, and then eventually the name morphed uh, from fact into fact fire, which was probably down to architects taking minutes and uh, writing fact fire. And then I said, oh, I'll just run with that one. Um, Fact Fire then, we moved to Bald Isle Industrial Estate in 2004, out of the bedroom. Once my second child came along and kicked me out of the box room, and uh, I've been in this building in Robertson House ever since in various offices around the place. In 2013, uh, Joe Boyce joined the company and then shortly after became a director in the company. And Joe has kind of taken over the, the on-site aspect of Fact Fire and has driven it on since. In 2018, we set up a second office in Donegal and Letterkenny in the Colab, and we now have three lads uh, working out of that. Well, we should have three lads working out of that, but they're now working from their bedrooms, like I've started out. And then Factfire now, as it stands, has 16 staff from admin through to engineers, through to access and everything else in between. Um, this is myself here, the, the fellow with the beard, uh, for anyone that doesn't know me. And then in behind me there is a picture of Planty. So anyone that has worked for Factfire will know Planty well. Planty is with me since the very start and is, is a vital cog in the Factfire wheel. And if Dermot Gibbons is on the on the call, Dermot kept it alive for about six years while, uh, while he worked here. So how did I end up here uh, speaking tonight? Unfortunately for me, I was talking to Dan Fitzgerald uh, on a phone call and we were just chatting away and Dan was asking me how I was getting on. And I was saying, oh, I'm inspecting a lot of individual flats in and around town. And uh, Dan was asking me about this, that, the other. And then all of a sudden Dan said to me, oh, I think that might be interesting. Would you do a bit of a chat on that? So I stupidly said, yes, I oh, sure no, brother Dan. But I thought, like, sure enough, this would never happen. And then within about two days later, Dan wrote that dope, and uh, that's how I ended up speaking this evening. So thanks, Dan. Um, I also was telling Dan at the time that, look, between probably August 2019 and to this date, we've looked at well over 100 individual flats in and around town and, uh, and other places. like So we just have been, and all of these inspections um, have been invasive in their nature. So we're going in and out of the flats all the time um but we were only it's important to say now at this time that um, we only look at the flats we don't look at the common escape routes don't look at the, the common uh, corridor or the common stairs more or less walking up with blinkers on open the front door of the flat and then commence the inspection from there so the genesis of my inspection and reporting um I started out when I went into the, the first day I turned up to look at the flats. Uh, I turned up with a notebook, a piece of pen and paper, like I had been uh, doing, um, walked in around, took my notes, took a quick sketch of the flat, wrote it down, came back to the office, and then tried to do up a report. I, that was, I was going at that for a number of weeks. I was doing three and four flats uh, a day and getting muddled when I came back uh, after looking at the flats, like so what I had done, what pictures I had taken. I then started to realize when I was going to the flats that the flats were repetitive in nature. So all these flats I was looking at were built from, say, 1992 up probably to the middle of the noughties. So they were all 
like oldish enough flats, but I was seeing the same design over and over again. And because I was seeing the same design over and over again, that started to allow me when I was going to do my inspections, I, I then did up a, a template report. I was calling to site. I was able to say, look, I have four types of flats here I'm looking at. When I would call to site, then I would pull out a printout of report number six or report number one saying this is for this particular type of flat. I would then start filling in the information into that and then go back and type it up into the office. I was also discovering similar issues in all the flats. So that helped me with my report as well. Uh, I would be looking at when I go into the flats, I was starting to see the same eight items over and over again. And um, that allowed me as well to do up my handwritten report. So I had all my issues kind of written out the report. I was more or less crossing them out when I was on site, putting them back into my bag and then heading off to the next flat. Um, that's the same again, four standard reports for each flat design. And then eventually um, I started to say, look, I, I can get this up onto the cloud. If I get these reports onto the cloud, I can access the reports from the cloud and write the reports up on site. And that, that's how I, I started to inspect and how I got to where I am at this moment in time. And no doubt, as I continue, if I continue inspecting these flats in 12 months time, it will be hopefully have, will, will have improved again. So I mentioned that there's four standard uh, flat layouts that I have noticed when I'm inspecting these flats. So the first type is a ground floor flat access via their own entrance door from the open air. So what this is, is you come in off the street, basically at ground floor into the flat. Sometimes there's a small little wind lobby here. You have your kitchen and then you go through the back into a small little lobby area with two bedrooms or three bedrooms down the back. And um, that's flat number one. Flat number two is a ground or first floor flat access via a common corridor or lobby. So these would be, you'd come up the common stairs, you'd have your common lobby, you'd come in off the flat. The flat's located less than four and a half metres above uh, ground floor level. So anyone that knows uh, the BS double five double eight part one will know that these flats are, they don't require a protected entrance hallway. So that became the, the next uh, type of flat and uh, report I was able to, to make up because of it. The third type was flats ac access directly off an escape stair. So these flats, when you have this, this style of flat, it would be two flats per level. Um, each flat would open directly into the escape stair. And because there's two flats per level, you have to provide a protected entrance hallway. So when I would go into these flats, I would instantly start to look for a protected entrance hallway and I would have a report uh, to suit that design or that, that layout. And then the final uh, layout was flats um, from second floor and up. The blue, like in the last, the blue represents a protected entrance hallway. So these flats, the same again, they'd have FD20 fire doors because they're all built in that, that time period with FD30S entrance doorways. And again, it's, these, are, these are just a sample of the four flats that we would, we would find all the time. So the common issues that I started to discover inside in the flats, as I mentioned earlier, there's eight reoccurring fire safety items continue to show up with issues. And because of these eight, uh, it became it becomes re repetitive in nature. And, and this repetitiveness helped me then when I was going in to inspect because I, I, I became so used to seeing each item. It meant that I wasn't missing uh, things. I wasn't missing deficiencies when I was going from flat to flat. So the first is the entrance door. So um, this, the entrance door has would have several issues. We'll get into them later. The second thing is the internal doors. Um, when you get inside in the flats, flats like the flats provided with the protected entrance hallways, there's always issues with the internal doors and these. The third item is above the above the partitions in the entrance hallways. So where I required a protected entrance hallway, I would open up the ceiling and I'd find issues above the protected entrance above the with the partitions above the ceiling. The fourth item. Um, oh, sorry, I'm to mixing it up. Um, the, the fourth item is the internal partitions. The third item was above the entrance, above the entrance door, where where the services would enter into the flat. The fifth was the fire alarm within the flat, so that would be your standard smoke alarm. The sixth is the landlord fire detection alarm system. The seventh would be the soil pipes penetrating the compartment floors. And then the eighth would be the windows and doors from the bedrooms. So items one and two, uh, entrance doorways and internal doors, I've grouped them together. So 
13 common issues were discovered when reviewing these doors in the flats. The majority of the issues probably arose because the age of the flats inspected 10 to 50 to 25 years old. So like if you take it, any, any door that's provided, uh, any fire door that's provided anywhere is going to take bruise, bruising and battering over the years, like as people carry in, in, in and out stuff into the flats, as people add new locking devices to their doors. And sometimes as people decided that they're just going to change the entrance door to their flat. So like over the 25, 10 to, 10 to 25 years, the doors just take a hammering. Some were definitely common fire safety legacy issues, such as fire stopping between the frame and the wall or no cold, sm cold smoke seals installed at the time of installation. So like it's quite common now when I go to inspect flats, we would take off the architrave um, around the edge of the doors, either of the internal doors within the flats or the entrance door to the flat. And it will be quite common not to find fire stopping between the frame and the wall. So I just put a note down here. At this point in time, we have discovered four or five door frames fire stopped correctly. So I've inspected over a hundred flats and so that approximately 5% of them have had fire stopping between the door and the frame. The other 95% are just left with no fire stopping. As the issues were repetitive, a uh, report was altered with a simple matrix using shading uh, to highlight the issues. The issues were further explained and, a recommendation, and recommendations provided in the in appendix. This is just an example of the simple matrix. So what I do is I'd have my report. This I'd state like, for example, this would be the entrance door. I just say the type of door FD30S. When I would go to site, I would do a quick assessment on the door to see to, to see if I felt it was an FD30S door or not. One of the first things I would do is I'd, I'd look at all the other doors on the common corridor. If the door was identical to all the other common corridors, it was more likely uh, the, the original door that was installed on, on a fire door. I would secondly then have a look at the door just to ensure that it achieved, like it had the 44 mil, was provided with, the frame was provided with some form of uh, intumescent strip. And then from there on, I would say, yes, that's more likely a fire door. I would try, I would also check the top of the edge of the door just to see if there was any stamps uh, to say, you know, it's an FD30S fire door. But due to the age of these, it would be unlikely, it's, it, was, it never really occurred that it was stamped because they were just, they were just gone at this stage. And um, I would then start to, to look at this, the different issues. So the issues were, were, were like, you know, what was the, the gap between the edge of the door and the frame within the allowable limits? Was the door fire stopped? Where the correct uh, number of hinges provided? Where screws provided in the hinges? All of the common issues that you would find in fire doors. I would then just highlight uh, each issue as it arose. And I was able to do that on site um, then, you know. So this here is a, just an example of the matrix or the, the, rec, the issues and the recommendations that are provided in the appendix. You can see there, I just go through one to 13. Uh, I'll just give you an example, like intermescent cold smoke seal missing or damaged. And then I would give them a recommendation. The gap between the door and the frame above the farm mill, a recommendation. No fire stopping, a recommendation. Okay. So I'm not going to go through the 13 points because I'm sure everybody here has, has a good idea of them. But I will say that the following issues are really important when you're going to look at the fire doors uh, in these flats. Number one is the fire stopping. Like I've, I've mentioned it already, five, possibly four or five flats have had it done. So if you are going to look at flats it's really, and, you, and you decide that you are going to do an invasive inspection, remove the architrave to check because it's highly likely that it's not done. The other item that I would recommend to keep an eye out for, and it's, I only know this through myself from missing it, is you go in, you look at the door, you see that there's a key locking device on it, and you recommend to get a thumb torn put in, which is grand. But a lot of the doors um, over time had had chub locks put on um, just by the owners who would have been in the flats previously. So I was going in, I was picking up the key locking device and I just, because I was, wasn't spending enough time on the door, I might possibly miss the chub lock. But luckily enough, I was dealing with uh, reasonable contractors and they would bring me up to, to ask. So it's, it's an item I don't miss anymore. Um, another item which I haven't highlighted, but I just think I should say as well is that flats built in the say 92 to 
2000. They all seem to, at the entrance doors, they all seem to have chain closers or um, the spring hinges provided as opposed to overhead closers. Now, when I'm inspecting these flats, I make this an issue every single time and I insist on a new overhead closer being fitted to the door. And um, when that overhead closer goes in, uh, I leave the existing chain closer alone. I don't ask them to remove it because I don't want to alter the. I try to keep the, the work to the door as minimal as possible. So if you're going in and you discover a chain closer and you want to put an overhead closer, I would recommend that you leave the, leave the chain closer as is and just put in the overhead closer in addition to it. Another item that is not on my, third, my list of 13, um, but I, I had to put a sub note underneath it is the hot press door. So if you see the, if you can see this, this hot press door here, it's, you, you see them in flats all over town built in the, not in the nineties. Like it's kind of like a Georgian panel uh, door, mock Georgian panel door. And a lot of the time they have a Georgian wire above the top of the door as a fan light, which is fine in a protected entrance hallway. But when you go to look at the hot press door or the small store door, um, it looks like it's filled in with a, some sort of a panel on top. But when you actually go and look in behind the back of that panel, you discover, oh, sorry, you discover that it is a just like a six mil plywood panel, if even that. So they've gone in, they've put in a fire door, they put a closer on it. It has intermessent strips, but they've just installed this uh, piece of ply above the top of the door. So air solution to this, it probably, if if we were to go and get the, like, it wouldn't be a test tested door solution. But what we've done here when we discover this is we get a piece of uh, fire door plank and um, we would intermess and seal the edges of the fire door plank. And then we would rebate it into the, above the door and then put uh, a panel, panel it in on the back of it then so that it's secure. So it's just something to watch out for when you're going in to look at these uh, flats built at that time. I do think, uh, I do not, I think it's really important to state this. I, when I go to look at flats, I don't, if it's a ground floor or first floor flat and it's less than four and a half meters of growth above ground floor level and it's accessed from a common corridor, um, I don't inspect the fire doors internally within the flat. I just have that as in this instance, it's not considered necessary to inspect the doors because we feel that they shouldn't be there or not that the doors shouldn't be there, but fire doors aren't necessary in this instance. The next item I have then is the partition above and, adja or, and adjacent to the entrance door. So two reoccurring issues happen. Number one, the electrical cables for the flats enter in this location. Um, so every single flat we've opened up, we'd go in to look, uh, inspect above the top of the entrance door. I get a, a hole cut in the ceiling just in front of it. And all, every single time, either the fire alarm cables or the cables or the electricity, the electrical cables for the flat are coming in. 100% of the time. Uh, the water pipes are entering the flat. This doesn't happen all the time, but happens around, I'd say, 70% of the time. But that's just a guesstimate. Like. It's unusual to find them fire stopped, very unusual. Um, and you might be able to see here. So this is just, we would cut a hole in the ceiling just in front of the entrance door. And then we'd get up, I'd get up, try and get in and take a photo of the cables breaching uh, the wall. Then the contractor would come back in afterwards and just like, because it's just cables, a bit of mastic then to fire stop. It's worth noting to date that two flats uh, were fire stopped as when the cables were coming in over the top of the wall. So in all the time, in a hundred flats, two flats, uh, it's, it's not a high percentage of them done. I, the next item we discover or we check out is the internal partitions and closing the entrance hallway. So there's four reoccurring issues here um, when we go in to inspect. The elect electrical cables uh, penetration is not far stop above the ceiling. So when we're going in to inspect here, we would cut a hole above the entrance hallway and we would try to use that hole above the entrance hallway or the entrance door to check the other partitions. But if it's not possible, I'd cut another hole along the entrance hallway and, and inspect elsewhere. Pipes penetrate, pipe penetration is not far stop above the ceiling, very common. Um, sockets and plugs not constructed correctly in the stud partitions. Now, when I go into flats built in, in this time, so again, 15 to 20 year old, um, I make the assumption that the sockets aren't done correctly 100% of the time. I don't deconstruct the partition to check if they're done, 
done correctly or not. I just assume they're not done and I get uh, all plugs and sockets either side of the partition redone with putty pads. The partitions are not carried to the underside of the floor above. Um, quite like rarely is it done. A lot of the time it's brought the, the part, the, you might have a timber stud and it's, the timber stud is left exposed. Um, you have metal studs where the metal studs are where the, they just stop above the uh, above when they get above the ceiling. So I've shown this image here, if, which is just one I just pulled out because it shows three of the above issues. Like so, number one, you can see there electrical cables penetrating off first up. So these cables here are going across. I just missed out, and they're going through the the partition, not first up. Pipe penetration is not first up. You can see this uh, pipe insulated pipe here going through and then the, the holes cut into the plasterboard. And then the last one, partitions are not carried to the underside of the floor. This here is the track for the ceiling in the entrance hallway. And then there's about a 100, 150 mil gap then where there's no plasterboard carried up to the underside of the, the concrete floor. So this would have been, this is a, a 30 minute entrance hallway, which is just not completed at all. The solutions for these four issues are, are pretty simple. Fire stop the cables with mastic, fire stop the pipe penetrations with mastic. In all incidents, I should point out that the, the pipe penetrations are less than 40 mil. So there's no, ins, no, no, no issue with just using mastic to fire stop them. Putty pads in the electrical, in the sockets, in the, for the partitions, 100% of the time, never check, just assume that they have to be done. And fire stop the top of the partition to the underside of the floor. So this here, first, like fire stopping this varies from flat to flat. And you have to use your your common common sense really when you go and discover. So if I go in and I find, you know, a small gap between the top of the part the stud partition and the underside of the concrete floor, I'd use a bit of fire bat to finish it out, and I might get them to finish out uh, the plasterboard. It it depends and varies from flat to flat, and but you have to use your common sense when doing it. You, there's no point in deconstructing the flat just to fix a small uh, item. There are occasions when the, part, the penetrations and partitions and penetrations above the ceiling are very poor or where the flat is located on the uppermost level and with an attic above. OK, so this image that I showed you previously is an example of like fixing this became a nightmare because for us to go in and fix this, we'd have to take down all the ceiling, both sides, try and get up and get the plasterboard to the underside of the concrete floor, letter box where we have services going through and then do fire stopping on top of that. So it would mean probably taking down, completely taking down the ceiling inside in the entrance hallway and cutting holes in the ceiling, in, in the living room, the kitchen, the hot press, the whole way around. The other issue is that you go up and you discover that the flat's on the topmost level of the building. When the flat is on the topmost level of the building, there's inevitably, inevitably uh, an attic space above it. So. What you would normally, if you were doing a fire search, you would either go and cap, this, cap the entire flat with a half hour construction and build the partitions up to the underside of the half hour ceiling, or put a cavity barrier along the lines of the partition. When we go and inspect these flats, we, the, the ceilings are not uh, half hour fire rated, and then the partitions are just carried up to the underside of the ceiling. So when I started looking at these, my solution was, I went in and I don't know if you can make it out from that photo there, but that, quilt there is a, a 30 minute cavity barrier fitted along the line of that partition wall there, the whole way around the uh, around the internal in entrance hallway. And that was that was the solution starting out. And the contractor that was with us went in and did that and did a, did a fine job. But when we came to, to this issue here on or this this problem, this this problem flat, um, it, the, the fixing of it was becoming worse than the actual uh, than, than take it just became a nightmare to try and fix so what happened in this instance was that we installed a horizontal shaft wall in the entrance hallway and it, it became cheaper quicker and a better solution to take down the existing ceiling put a horizontal shaft wall throughout the entrance hallway and then allow whatever services and penetrations were above to continue to be above and fire stop the cables and that as they come down we then went on and when we now when we come to flats that are located on the uppermost level and we discover an attic above we're also using this similar solution because it's easier than getting up and putting in the cavity barrier in the attic space 
we just tend to get the attic hatch that's in the entrance uh, hallway, relocate that into a bedroom or a kitchen or whatever, and then put in the horizontal shaft wall then after. Like the last time, it's important to note that when the flats at ground or first floor level, I don't bother going in inspecting the internal partitions. I make the assumption that they're not required because of whatever it is, clause point three of BS to provide the part one. And I, I, I just make that assumption and leave, leave the internal entrance uh, uh, partitions alone. The next item that I checked continuously was fire alarm within the flat. So due to the age of the flats, uh, most of them are provided with LD3 systems. So anyone that knows uh, it was technical guidance that could be 1997, jumped from LD3 up to LD2. So ones before that have LD, LD3 systems in them. Most of them were damaged are no longer working. So it would be quite common to go in and have seen the, 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 the smoke alarm uh, broken just fellas hitting it with whatever, they're just gone and no longer in use. Some of the time they were the battery, the battery style, the, uh, not mains linked. So for anyone that grew up in the 80s and uh, 90s, it would, that would it'd be the one that you would standard see in your, in your hallway and your stairs. And in all cases, we upgrade to LD2. So even, no matter what, we go from this LD3, remove that LD3 and then go up to a new LD2 system. And that's a standard across every single flat we've looked at. Most of the time it's the wireless variety. So um, it's really handy to install. It goes in, they put it in the entrance hallway, the couple of bedrooms, the kitchen living, and it's, it's done quite quickly. The items to watch out with the wireless system are, uh, and this is important, is uh, not all components activate. And so it would be common, not common, but like, it, when I go back to reinspect these flats, I would go in and I would press the uh, smoke alarm in, say, the entrance hallway, or I would have an operative with me and I'd get him to press it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd have an op <clears throat> an op oh, sure. I'd have an, op an operative with me and he would press the um, the smoke alarm in the entrance hallway, and then I would go around. <clears throat> The other uh, areas or the other parts of the flat just to see if it's activated and regularly enough you would find one of the the heads not activating the other thing is not installing the test unit so for anyone that doesn't know what the test unit looks like it's it's something on the wireless system it's it's some looks it seems to look like that regularly enough so initially when we were going in they just hadn't got the test unit installed but now like it's because of like going in repetitive nature they're always there but it's something to watch out for when you're putting the wireless system in is to get make sure that the test unit is provided as well. The landlord fire detection alarm system. So the wide range of issues with the landlord fire detection alarm system, okay. No systems in the building. I could go in looking at some flats. I'd be walking in the common stair, the common corridor, and I'd be looking around for smoke heads or even manual call points and they mightn't be there. M systems with, uh, with no sounders in the flats. So again, you might have manual call points on the common corridor and common stairs, but there's no sounders then provided in the entrance hallway. So if there was an activation of the system, the people within the flats aren't aware. L L4 systems in the building with no sounders in the flats. So we've looked at some flats where they've gone in recently, upgraded the fire detection alarm system to an L4, not an L3X, and not put any sounders in the flats. Um, L3X systems, uh, but the heat detector sound are damaged. So the solutions here are varied. Like um, it, it really is depends on who you're dealing with from a management company point of view. So if you go in and say, for example, here, uh, we take the, the L4 system in the building with no sounders in the flats. I would identify this as an issue in my report and I would request that for our individual flat, we put a smoke detector, uh, a heat detector sounder inside in our individual flat to bring our individual flat up to spec, never minding that it mightn't be the case in, in other individual flats. Our client would then have to request off the management company uh, permission to do so. So in some blocks of flats that we've gone into, they they just have said, point blank said, no, you can't come near that system. And we would go, it would be going backwards and forwards for, for a number of uh, weeks and months to, to try and get it resolved. And then in the end, you just cannot resolve it. So it, it leaves me in a scenario where I know I have a flat with no sounder in it, but I do know I have, say, coverage in the in the common space. 
So I was in a situation where I was uncomfortable more so than trying to make the flat comply. I, I couldn't make it comply, but I didn't feel comfortable leaving the person in the flat that I had looked at uh, without some form of knowing that there was a fire in the common space outside. So in the end, I settled with providing an LD2 system in our flat and then bringing a smoke, um, a smoke alarm from that LD2 system directly outside of the flat entrance door um, so that if there was smoke in the common space outside of our flat entrance door, that uh, at least the person within the flat would then be made aware. It's It doesn't comply with any particular guide, code or anything. It was just something that I had to settle with myself um, for those individual flats when that occurred. The next item that we came up with or we, 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 we check is the soil pipes penetrating the compartment floors. Wide range of fire stopping attempted is the word I'd use. Most common issues discovered are, uh, right? So you'd have a, a 60 minute shaft with holes between the flat and the actual shaft. So a couple of pictures here and you'll see that you have this small little shaft door that's accessed off the common corridor side. The operative with me would go out and screw fix off the shaft door and allow me then go in to inspect. And in this particular instance here, you can see there's the, the soil pipe going into the shaft and, and it was actually fire stopped with concrete, which was grand. But then you were left with this uh, hole where they just between the flat and the shaft. This is another one here on the far side where, again, the shaft door was taken off, the screw fixed off. And you can see then um, the soil pipe going in, but there's there's nothing around the uh, the soil pipe. So if you stuck your head in here, you were able to see, see into the kitchen or the bathroom of the flat, depending on where it was. The, the other one was uh, there was fire stopping taking place, but it was with either wraps or collars, but it was just poorly done. So you would find that um, you see here, look, it's you go in, you see a soil pipe. And when I look up, you, you probably can't make it out there, but there was an actual there was a wrap put onto that pipe. But like there might be 50 mil between the wrap and the actual concrete floor. So it's floating in the wind. So in this case here, we would have went in, refire stopped and put the wrap in. The same occurs here. This is the same soil pipe um, I just brought down to show you that it went down to the ground. In this case here, you can see it was just anything and everything was just shoved in around the pipe and a bit of a uh, famous foam. So in that case, we cleared it out and we we were lucky enough that in this instance here, it was in there was a basement below. So we were able to just get down into the basement and complete the fire stopping below. But it's it's quite common to find just poor fire stopping. Like So they, they would have made an attempt, but it was it's just poorly installed. But my favorite fire stopping of soil pipes to date is this picture here. When I seen it, uh, the day it was pulled off, I took a picture and said, someday I'll actually have to show this to somebody. Little did I realize that Dan Fitzgerald is going to make me do it. But if you look hard enough there, you can see a, piece, a coffee cup uh, shoved in as far as stopping. Like it was a classic and it was one that uh, I, I'll keep for, for a good while. Um, the next issue was windows and doors. So. I did not inspect or I don't inspect windows if I don't think they're necessary to inspect them. So if I go into a flat and it's located on second floor level, I'm not looking at the windows from the bedrooms. If I go into a flat and it has a, a protected entrance hallway at ground or first floor level, I don't I don't feel that windows are necessary to inspect there because it's not required in accordance with BS double five double eight part one. So I don't inspect them then. So they normally are needed to be inspected in the ground floor flats that are accessed directly from the living room. So that'd be this flat here where you come in off the street, come into your uh, living space and you have the little lobby. So that's that's the time where I, I do actually look at the windows that needed are needed for, for it to be escape and rescue, okay? So the common issues that I find on these windows are uh, as follows. So the window is no longer open or difficult to open. So it's just, you know, windows might be 25 years old. It's like the door, the entrance doors or any other part of it has taken, it's it's bruised and battered and just no longer uh, able to open it. The window is the correct sizes, but the hinges reduce the opening section. So what happens here is that this part of the hinge, when it opens, pulls back, it reduces the opening section of the window. So you, you don't get the 450 needed. The first time I seen this, I, I kind of went to the contractor. Oh, this window has to come out. Like, you know, I was there. Uh, it's, what are we going to do here? And sure, the contractor just says, oh, should we just replace the hinge? And sure enough, then he came along and whipped off the hinge and put on a new hinge. And the, the opening section was fine. So I felt like a bit of a fool. 
the um, the other issue that I've come across is we need windows suitable for escape and rescue, but we the 1100 above the ground isn't isn't correct. We might have 1150 or 1200. So you can see here, in this case here, there's a the floor is the floor at the top of the window. I think it was around 1200 or 1150 or something like that. So what we ended up doing was we it was it wouldn't be right to take out the entire window, uh, feck up the elevation for people next door. So what we ended up doing was we built a step, 200 by 100, the whole way across the bedroom, so that if need be, the person could step up onto the step and then be within the the height to allow them to escape from out the window. The final thing I'll get onto is the, the cloud base and, and the repetitive nature. So. Because of the, the issues were repetitive, the flat layouts were repetitive. I could do up, I had done done up the four standard reports, and then I was able to save them into the cloud. Um, we use Google here, so I was able to save them into the, the Google cloud. I now know when I go to the report, I go to my cloud, my templates, I click on the report I take down. I have all my issues that I've ever discovered in each report, and then I basically delete as I find as if the issue doesn't occur. So if, for example, I'm going in to look at fire alarms, I would have each and every issue that I've discovered previously in the fire alarm in my template. And then I just delete, 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 leaving the one that's most relevant and maybe altering it to suit. And um, the reports, because it's cloud based, the reports are repeat, are completed on site. This was a huge uh, thing for me. I was coming back trying to remember and look at my notes and mixing things up. And um, the fact now that I'm on site, I get all my items, I get my report done, I issue the report back to the office. They then come back and confirm they've proofread it and picked up any typos. And then I'm able to send it out directly to the client and to the contractor straight away. As I said there, I'm no longer, because I, I could inspect five flats in one day. And like with this cloud, because I'm using the cloud-based uh, reporting, it's, it's really removed uh, errors. And it also ensures when I go back to reinspect, um, because it's cloud based, I'm able to get the latest report and update my latest report with the with the snags that I found. Okay, so look, I have a few tips uh, from just from inspecting them. You can take them on board or not. Uh, that's totally up to yourselves. So I'm lucky enough that most of the time I have the same uh, operative with me every single time, uh, Keith. He has become brilliant. Uh, he knows where the soil pipes are. I would I would miss soil pipes. Keith is able to find them. He knows how to take off the architrave without destroying the place. He finds the penetrations. Uh, he really makes uh, it it's simpler for me to go in and inspect, get set up while he goes off and does starts the initial investigation. Be open to contractor suggestions. So the horizontal shaft while over the entrance hallway. I never like I've used horizontal shaft walls before, but I never gave it any consideration in this instance. And it has made life so much easier in flats where we discover a lot of where where there's a lot of problems above the entrance always. And um, another example of that was the hinge. Like I couldn't have felt like more of an Egypt, like when the contractor says, oh, sure, I'll just change that hinge. Try and finish your report on site. Don't leave parts for when you return to the office. That's just a personal thing where like uh, I'm going, I'm, I'm no longer mixing things up. I'm no longer forgetting everything. And because I have to fix it on site, it means it has to be right when I leave that flat. Uh, so it's, it, it's, a, it's a big, it was a big changer for me. And if something is odd alarm bell, and alarm bells start ringing in your brain, get ready to cut more holes in the ceiling. So if you go in, and you could open above the entrance hallway and there is nothing above between the top of the frame and the underside of whatever, go and start cutting holes elsewhere in the flat to check the compartmentation around the flat because uh, it usually means that's what you're going to find. So that's it, Shanae. Uh, that's it. Uh, any questions there, just let me know.